you know, oak trees that were carved 500 years ago. You right. know, that's just uh, irreplaceable. Let's bring in Kobe Carp. He's an award-winning architect and an expert in structure and architectural history. He joins us live from Miami. Good morning. And, you know, just about any kid who's taking, uh, you know, a design class or uh, um, an architecture class is going to see those famous flying buttresses and learn about how the interior of that cathedral was allowed to be so big and vast and open because of the architecture uh, there. This is a, a really, um, a really important place architecturally, isn't it? It's a phenomenal uh, opportunity for us to look at a cathedral which really belongs to the community of the world and the opportunity to come back and rebuild and restore this gorgeous phenomenal piece of architecture is Emmanuel Macron said this is really a step in the right direction and something we must move forward on now Kobe uh, we understand that there were renovations uh, being done on Notre Dame uh, as this fire broke out some have suggested that those renovations may have something to do with this blaze being sparked when you hear that what comes to mind sadly sadly so these things do happen and they do happen quite a bit um, there is, though, time that will tell. It seems as though a lot of the artwork was saved and was pulled out. And we do have a great opportunity now with the records that we have kept to come back as a community and to rebuild and to restore and to bring back the cathedral to the way it was yesterday, the day before the fire. Well, yeah. can, can you give us context in how that rebuilding may go about? How do you replace something that essentially is, as Christine said, irreplaceable? Yes. It's a very uh, hard work that we do. What we do have is we have um, the opportunity that what we do normally is we go back to the records and into the way things were built. We have a photographic record and what we then try to do is bring it back to the way it was. Um, to the way it was um, on a daily basis. We bring back the art and the way it was built and we do have an opportunity today uh, more so than ever before. We have the technology to put things together. We do it on a daily basis. We bring buildings and we bring the finishes and the materials within the buildings together the way they were. This structure specifically, which was built substantially um, and the damage that occurred out to the wood timbers, a lot of that will be able to be put back together. Mm -hmm. Obviously, it will never, never be the way it was um, original because that has gone away. But we do have an ability to bring it back and restore it so that when you do come back, into the cathedral, you do see the way it was originally. Can I ask you about fireproofing and fire prevention? And, mm -hmm. and you know, I mean, we just saw that fire move so quickly, and clearly there will be an investigation. Uh, it's very soon, but were you surprised to see the flames gobble up the interior of that church so quickly? I personally was, yes, because normally I would expect the fire suppression and the fire um, alarms to be connected to the fire. Um, prevention of this glorious structure. This is a public structure and I would have um, a, liked to see um, hopefully in the rebuilding and the resurrection of this cathedral a bit more fire protection and bringing it up to the point where we, this event never ever happens again. All right, Kobe Carp, an award-winning architect joining us from Miami to discuss uh, the tragedy we saw yesterday in Paris. Kobe, thank you very much. All right, a YouTube feature designed to combat misinformation was responsible for linking the Notre Dame Cathedral fire to the 9-11 uh, terrorist attacks. While the fire was uh, raging, multiple YouTube live streams featured a paragraph pulled from the Encyclopedia Britannica providing background on 9-11. Uh, the company blames the mix-up on its algorithms, and it removed the links on all Notre Dame fire posts after the issue was flagged. YouTube rolled out its fact-checking feature in 2018 after it was criticized for uh, recommending conspiracy videos following major news events. The nation's capital on edge as Attorney General Bill Barr's edited version of the Mueller report is expected to go public on Thursday. Washington just watching and waiting for the redacted report to fill in details on what the 22-month-long special counsel investigation uncovered. We already know from Barr's four summary that Robert Mueller all but cleared the Trump campaign of collusion with the Russians. We also know the special counsel did not exonerate the president on obstruction of justice, no matter what Donald Trump says. But major questions still remain, including whether there will be revelations about a number of ongoing investigations. Justice reporter Pamela Brown has more from Washington. 
Well, good morning, Christine and Boris. We have learned that the highly anticipated Mueller report will be released Thursday morning to the public and to Congress, as according to the Justice Department spokeswoman. And the White House is bracing for this. White House officials.